Welcome to my full guideline for how I get free games. Now before I begin, there's going to be a five part video series. The first four videos are going to be different examples of different tactics that I use for getting the free games. I'm going to be explaining them in detail. There's going to be different examples throughout. And the fifth part and final part is going to be a list of ten guidelines and rules to keep in mind while trying to implement these tactics that I'm going to be talking about. Now, I'm pretty sure you're familiar with other uh, ways of getting quote unquote free games such as surveys and ads etc etc you know if you fill out the survey you can get a certain amount of points if you pass it to your friends you get a certain amount of points and they can use it for Amazon gift cards and whatnot this has nothing to do with that it's not a gimmick and most importantly it's not something that's going to be fast paced it's not an overnight type of thing so if you're coming here expecting that you're going to just get a free game right now tonight or tomorrow maybe tomorrow maybe the day after but if you want to get it right away this is not the way it's going to work this is more of a business tactic that I've utilized throughout the last two years of making a game collection because I realized I don't want to spend too much money on the video games if I'm going to make a video game collection. So let me find different tactics. And before I go into the first example, I'd like to show you a sample of some of the free games that I've gotten and some of the free equipment that I've gotten for my PS3 because I usually, I'm mainly collecting PS3 games and PS3 equipment. Uh, but let me just show you some of these things that I've got just so you can understand where I'm coming from. So I've gotten bad games from the point of Championship Paintball 2009 all the way up to God of War 3 for free. I've gotten more recent games like Uncharted 3 for free. I've gotten Transformers War for Cybertron. I've gotten Last Planet 2, Mortar Storm, Need for Speed Shift, Uncharted 2, uh, Street Fighter 4, Stranglehold, uh, Sonic Ultimate Genesis Collection, Skyrim, Red Dead Redemption, Game of the Year Edition, and the list goes on. Dark Souls, God of War Collection, Dead Island, Borderlands, Battlefield, and from equipment I've gotten four, at least four PS3 controls, I think even more, uh, DualShock 3. And I've also gotten a driving wheel for the Gran Turismo and any racing game series, um, along with HDMI cords, along with the USB cables, just a whole bunch of different things that I've used and I've utilized to get more free games that I've gotten for free as well. All of these things are worth, uh, the, the wheel itself is worth about $150, got that for free. The controls are worth about $40. Um, the games, a lot of them, they came out new, a lot of them came out old, but at the same time, they were all high rating games and they were all worth something. And the best part of it is I didn't have to pay a penny. So let's cut the talk and get to the first example. Example one, how do I do these things? How do I get these free games? One way that I get free games is that I buy uh, PS3 bundles. I was one time sitting down looking on Craigslist and Craigslist is a website, this is the main website that, I'm, that I utilize for free games. I'm not sure in your area if you have different uh, websites that are similar to this, but it's basically a community of people that they sell things that they, don't, they no longer want. So it's not retail, it's not like GameStop, it's not like um, uh, Best Buy or eBay even, but it's just it's just people that they want to get rid of some of their things so they sell it person to person, so face to face. So definitely you don't want to do this if you're a kid, if you're maybe under, I would say if you're under 14, actually even under, I would say under 16 even, uh, you would want to do this alone, you don't have somebody there with you, and even if you're an adult, you want to have someone there with you just in case, because you're, de you're definitely meeting strangers to get this stuff done. So what I was doing, I was looking for a PS3, and I found one PS3 that had about uh, 10 games and the guy was selling it for about $200. But I already had some PS3 games that he already that he included. So what I thought was, you know what, let me just buy this PS3 and I'm only buying it for $200. It's already, I'm buying it for less than it's worth already and I can sell it for more and I can make the money for myself and then I can take the games that I want from it and get rid of the other ones that I don't want. So that's the first tactic, tactic number one. And here let me explain it to you in detail. This is an example of what I was saying earlier, which is I bought this whole set right here for, the guy put it up for $400. And include all these games, include these two controllers, HDMI, and you know, the power cable, and it also included the USB drive. Now one of the controllers is DualShock, the other one is not DualShock. So what I did was, I lowered the guy down to about $340. Initially, he had one game in there, which was Uncharted 1. And initially, we lowered the price to $350 um, after negotiating. So like I said, negotiating is very, very important. Don't just take the price for, uh, you know, just the price as, as is. 
always try to, to lower the price so that you can try to benefit and make money out, out of it as well. So first, we got it down to 350 for all this, which is a great, great deal. Like I said, uh, this content right here by itself is about 200 bucks. This this just right here by itself. So the whole thing for 350 is, is amazing. Now he uh, he let me know right before the last minute. He said, you know, Uncharted One is missing. So some people might say, okay, no problem, it's all right. You know, I'm getting a whole bunch of games anyways, and I'm already getting a great deal. No, but what I told him was, okay, at least let's lower the price by ten dollars. Um, you know, since we agreed on 350 for all the games, and of course he agreed because that's what's fair. So instead, I got it for 340, which is an even better, stellar deal. Now, after buying the system and buying all this content, what I would do is I would take all of this right here, whatever that I need, this right here, take this, take this. This is stuff that I don't have and I find valuable. Take this, I don't have this one. I don't have this one and I would like to play it. And this is mine, I already had this. So I value this game better. So what I did was I put this in here for my collection and took this out and added it to my collection. Max Payne 3, I value Max Payne 3. I feel like it has a lot of worth. Is it, me taking it out is not really going to affect me pricing this whole unit. So I took it out so I can benefit from it even more. Same thing with Battlefield 3. Nobody's going to say when I put the price up, oh, I wish Battlefield 3 was in there or else it w it's not worth it. So you know what? I took it out because visually someone looks at this and sees all of these games and all of them are very good games, by the way. All of them are rated good games um, and some of them fairly new. For instance, Rage is still fairly new. Uncharted 2, I would say, is not fairly, it's, you know, it's, it's not old. It's not an old game. It's older. Uh, Modern Warfare 3 and Call, Call of Duty games. Always Call of Duty games have attraction. No matter what. No matter how old it is. I bet you right now if I put Modern Warfare 2 up, people would still want to trade for it. And right here again, Modern Warfare 2. Um, and I left them in there. Why? Because they're very eye-catching. And then just looking at all of it together is eye-catching. So I took the things that I, I would benefit from and the things that I don't have, took them out. Now you, I see here a an HDMI co uh, cord. I can uh, put this in good use for myself. So I took this out and I replaced it with an extra AV cable that I had for the, for the PlayStation 2 or the PlayStation 3. So I added this in here. And again, the consumer or whoever's buying is not going to look at it and say, oh, how come it doesn't have an HDMI cable? I can just simply tell him, well, HDMI cable doesn't usually come with it. This is just the standard and here's the standard. And you can still get the same price. And now I'm looking here and there's two controllers. One is DualShock and one is not DualShock and I'm looking at this and I'm saying you know I can benefit from this DualShock I can either trade it or I can have it uh, as an extra controller for when friends come over and it's a DualShock 3 and again um, someone's not going to make a big deal about the controller if they see all of this as a good deal if they see the whole thing as a good deal overall that's what's most important and therefore they're gonna go for it and it would end up that I have all this for free so how would I do that? Now I have, I take a picture of this, put it online, uh, put it on Craigslist or whatever it may be, and I sell it, I put it up for, I want, it, I want to sell it for at least, let's say 350, 360. That's how much money I want, I want to get from it. Worst case, I'll break even. I'll get it for 340. If I get it for 340, I'm not really upset. Why? Because I still made a profit of $200 for free. All this stuff came for me for, to me for free. So that's, that's about, it's, you gotta think of it as money. You can, don't think of it as just content. You got this, this stuff is worth money and it's worth that much money. So this is how much I got from the, from the profit. So regardless, so if, even if I get it for, for 340, which is the same price I paid, I'm happy with that. But I'll say I'm a little bit greedy and I wanna make just an extra amount of money just, you know, just to put in my pocket, just for the heck of it, maybe for, the uh, the gas that I spent or whatever it may be, um, you know that's that's how it is when it comes to business. You always got to look at the profit margin and you always want to capitalize on it as much as possible. And you never want to spend something out of your pocket. You never want to spend out out of your pocket for you to just uh, uh, for you to make a deal. Uh, that's the goal. And when you aim for that, you you, you get you get things that are better. So I'll put this up for maybe about four hundred dollars. 
uh, knowing that someone's going to talk me down. So someone's going to come talk me down and tell me, listen, I'll give you $300 for it. And I'm going to say, oh, are you crazy? All this stuff is not worth $300. Uh, the lowest I'll go is $360 or $370. And then he'll, he'll keep talking to me until I'll get to that price that I want, which is, let's say, $360. And then $360, that's it. That's how much I get it for. And I'll end up making $20 on the side plus $200 worth of content. So this is one example. So as you can see for tactic number one, you need to spend before you gain first. So you don't want to go and buy games or systems that are already overpriced. If you see a, if you see a system bundle that is already at the price that it should be, you might not want to get it because if you get a free game, it's not going to be free. You're going to most likely end up losing because let's say if you buy something that's worth, let's say $400 and you bought it for about $350 and then you come to sell it, you're not going to be able to sell it for more than 350 especially if you took out like five games. Because people are going to look at it and say, you know what, this price is not competitive compared to, let's say, GameStop, compared to eBay. So you'd want to make it at a price margin that is competitive. And at the same time, you'd want to take that opportunity only when you feel like it's a really good bargain. And that's going to be part of the guidelines. So that was tactic number one. Stay tuned for the next video for tactic number two. You have two vids to click, so choose your pick and watch the video, but make sure you like it. Subscribe to this channel and you won't regret. Follow my social networks and you'll be all set. I'm Vigilante and you've been watching The Vigilante Effect.